Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Measures of Success Video Practice Buddy Series. I'm Dr. Deb. In this session, we're going to show you the best way to assemble and disassemble your bass clarinet. This is Caitlin. She's going to demonstrate this technique while I take you through the process step by step. As you can see, Caitlin has not yet taken her bass clarinet out of her case. She's going to show you how to do this in the safest way possible. If you do what Caitlin does, your bass clarinet won't become damaged when you take it out of your case. So, place your case flat on the floor just like Caitlin's. She's going to make sure that, the, that the, her case is not upside down and she's done that already. Your case might look a little different from hers, but usually there's a logo of some kind on the side of the case that should be facing up and not down. And then you want to show them where your logo is in your case? See, her logo is right there. You may have a different logo, and maybe you don't have a logo at all. If you don't have a logo on the top of your case, then check out the latches, because usually the latches will lift up if you don't have a logo in your case. Now, Caitlin's case, again, is a little different than yours because she's got a, a zipper on hers and a little Velcro flap. So when you, while you go ahead and open your case, Caitlin's going to open hers in the way that she knows how because her case is a little different. Go ahead and open that right now for you, Caitlin. As she's doing that, if you don't have a logo on the top of your case, one of the things you might be able to do is to put a really cool sticker on the top. That's the side that you always want to have facing up so you won't forget. Okay. So now that Caitlin's case is open, you can see the bass clarinet's inside. If necessary, this would be the time when you would apply some cork grease to the tenon joints on your bass clarinet. Now, Caitlin's bass clarinet is really good to go. She's already greased her the joints up, the, the tenon joints, and so we're just going to go ahead and move on. But you check yours. If you need some cork grease, stop the video right here and grease up your bass clarinet and then turn it back on. We'll be right here waiting for you. So, right now, Caitlin's going to locate a reed in her case, and she's going to remove it from the reed guard, and she's going to place the thin end of the reed into her mouth to get it moistened while she puts the bass clarinet together. So why don't you go ahead and do that? She's going to open it, and she's got a really nice reed case. You can talk to your band director, maybe, about getting a, a nice reed case like that. You might have a plastic one. So she's going to put that thin end right into her mouth and get it, start to get her uh, reed moistened. And now she's going to think about putting her bass clarinet together. So the first thing she's going to do is she's going to pick up the upper joint and she's going to hold it away from the keys. Now the reason why she holds it away from the keys is so that she doesn't bend any. And now she's going to press down the middle tone hole to lift the upper joint bridge key. And we're going to show you a close up of that in just a second. She's going to take that and she's going to attach the upper and lower joints by aligning the bridge keys to connect both joints with a gentle twisting motion. So there's the lower joint. She's going to put it straight in and give it a gentle twisting motion. And then she's going to align those bridge keys just like that. Really, really easy. Nice job. Now, She's going to pick up the bell, she's going to gently twist it onto the lower joint, and let her get the bell out of the case. And again, your bass clarinet may look a little different. A lot of bass clarinets have some keys, some, some extra keys like hers, uh, but basically the assembly is really the same for all the instruments. So she's going to take that bell and she's going to gently um, Align the, she's going to align the bell so it lines up with the keys of the bass clarinet and she's going to gently do, give it a little twisting motion, making sure that the, key, the rods at the bottom don't crunch into each other. And she's going to check the alignment and it looks pretty good from here. See how the bell, you, Caitlin, show them that just with, your, with running your finger right down the line of the, of the keys, all the way down to the bell. See how that lines up, really nicely done, very good. Now, she's going to get the floor peg from the case, and she's going to attach that floor peg to her bass clarinet. Check your clarinet. Some bass clarinets don't have floor pegs. Most of them do. You take a look at what she's doing. She's going to put the floor peg right into the receiver on the back of the bell, and she's going to adjust it to the height that she knows will fit her the best, and she'll just tighten the screw. Now, once she places it on the floor and the entire clarinet is assembled, she may make another adjustment so that the clarinet comes to her rather than her having to go to the clarinet. So uh, make sure that you're uh, adjusting that height when you need to. 
if you have a neck strap instead of a floor peg, uh, if that's the case, then simply put the neck strap around your uh, head and then around your neck and insert the hook end of that strap on into the neck, ha neck strap hole on the back of the instrument and then adjust the strap. The floor peg really is a better option, so if you don't have a floor peg, you might want to talk to your band director about getting one. Now finally, when the bass clarinet is secured with the, uh, with the floor peg on, Kayla's going to take the neck of the bass clarinet and she's going to attach it to the upper joint, again using that gentle twisting motion. So she places it straight in to the upper joint, she gives it a little bit of a twist, and she's going to align the neck so that it really lines up with uh, the register key on the back of the bass clarinet. And when she has that done, she's going to turn the bass clarinet around so she can show you that alignment. See how that's nicely aligned with the register key? Can you show them the register key? Point to that for them. And good. So it's nice and aligned with that. So that's it, basically. And now she would put the mouthpiece together. So with all that together, she's going to take the mouthpiece out of the case. And most of you should have a mouthpiece cap uh, around your mouthpiece. If you have it, take it off. Um, and now she's going to take, now that reed's been soaking in her mouth for a little while, so she's going to take the ligature off and place it in a safe place. Take the reed out of her mouth and she's going to place it on the flat part of the mouthpiece. She's going to align the reed so the tip is pretty much even with the tip of the mouthpiece. You want to be able to see a tiny, tiny bit of the mouthpiece just beyond the tip of the reed. Once she has that aligned, she's going to take the ligature and place it very carefully over the mouthpiece so she doesn't bump the reed. And she'll put the ligature in place. And once it's in place, she'll tighten that screw so that the, so that the reed is just held onto the mouthpiece. You don't want to tighten the ligature too much because you'll really squeeze the life out of that reed. But you want to tighten it on there so that the reed doesn't move around. Once she has that done, she's going to take the mouthpiece and she's, again, using that gentle twisting motion, she's going to twist that mouthpiece right on to the bass clarinet so that it's in line, again, with the register key on the back of the bass clarinet. And Caitlin's done a really good job of putting everything together. So that's it. That's the assembly. Disassembling the bass clarinet is really easy. Uh, when you take it apart, all you need to do is reverse the process. So the first thing she's going to do is she's going to take the mouthpiece off, just like that. See how gently she did that? You need to do that just as gently. She's going to take the ligature off so that she can release the reed. And once the ligature is off, she'll take the reed and she'll put it back in its case. Now notice how she's putting the ligature back on the mouthpiece. This is so the ligature doesn't get lost or doesn't drop. So she's going to secure that. The mouthpiece goes back into the mouthpiece guard or the mouthpiece cap. There you go. And there's the mouthpiece cap. And it goes right back into its proper spot in the case. She's going to pull out that wonderful reed case that she has replace the reed being very careful because that's a really good reed. Be very careful that you don't chip it because reeds cost some money and you want to make sure that you're being very careful with them. She'll put the case back in her big case and now she's going to again disassemble in the opposite way of assembly. So the first thing she's going to do is take the neck off. She'll give a little gentle twisting motion. Be very careful, and she'll put it back in the case in exactly the spot where it came from. The next thing she'll do is she'll take the floor peg off. And she'll unscrew the screw that's holding it in place, take the floor peg off, she'll replace that in the case where it's supposed to go. The next thing she'll do will be to twist the bell off the bottom joint. There it comes. Good. And she'll put that back in the place in the case that's meant for the bell. After she's done that, she's going to take apart the top and bottom joints, the upper and lower joints, <clears throat> and make sure 
that you're being very careful with the rods of the of the uh, keys because they can bend very easily. So as she takes that apart, she's going to depress that middle key on the upper joint like we talked about before so that the bridge key lifts and she's going to gently twist. Now, it's important when you're taking apart the upper and lower joints that you know exactly where they go in the case because if you don't and you put it in the wrong place, the, the uh, keys might get bent. So be sure you put it back again in exactly the same spot as they came from. Good job. Now once Caitlin sees that everything is back in place, and it is, she is free to close her case and now she is secure in the fact that the uh, bass clarinet is nice and tidy and neat and nothing's going to happen to it. It's not going to get damaged at all. And she's going to close it up. Remember to close it up because when you pick up the case, if it's not locked, then the case can fall open and the clarinet can fall out, and that's not a good thing, right? It's not a good thing, is it? Right. right. So, there you go. The assembly, this assembly, really pretty easy once you get used to it. The next Measures of Success video practice buddy for the bass clarinet is going to focus on posture, hand position, and embouchure, so be sure to check that out. And now, on behalf of all the folks here at FJH and Caitlin, I'm Dr. Deb. Thanks for watching.